Hello, this is Scott. So welcome to my YouTube series on advanced analytics and data science. Today we're talking about hands-on statistica. Um, I hope you joined me previously, but if you haven't, I normally focus on two themes, either a higher level theme, type of problem, um, what data science can do for you, what types of problems it can solve, or a hands-on tool application such as R, Statistica, Spotfire, Python, et cetera. So this is the latter. So this is going to be a hands-on demonstration in Statistica. Um, last time when we did this, we talked about the data health check node. This time I'm going to talk about filter and recode options. We're going to look at actually six, six great nodes. And uh, next time we're going to talk about uh, trans, uh, transformations and standardizations, um, the, the built-in capability there within Statistica. Um, feel free to send me a, an email um, with your feedback. I always appreciate that. So we're going to build a, a workspace, and it'll essentially look like this. But let's just go ahead and start from, from scratch. This example is going to come out of your um, examples with your system. So under data sets, if I go to um, messy data, um, messy data. So I have a uh, a data set here, 19,971 uh, rows or, or cases and 24 variables. And I'm going to create a workspace, and we're going to primarily work through this menu right here. We're going to look at six different um, options here under filter recode um, under the data tab. All right, so let me grab a new workspace. I'm going to start with a blank one. I'm going to drop that data down inside. So now I have this missing, this messy data. By the way, just so that you know, you can do, unlike the data health check that we talked about last time, you can do a lot of this interactively. So I can uh, do a menu on a, on a uh, spreadsheet um, itself. But here I'm going to work within a data flow so that we have um, some artifacts as we, as we go along. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, drag down a filter duplicate cases. And let me show you what that looks like. I'm, you know, I mean, I'm sure you're probably familiar with this. If I have anything that is a qualified duplicate, it will get rid of it. So here I have this thing called customer ID. This is a should be a unique field. Um, we'll see if it if it truly is. So I'm just going to say uh, my variables are customer ID, and I'm going to my output will be all of the variables there. All right. So remember, I started with 19971. If I run this right here, I get a downstream document, and it's 19963. So in fact, I do did have about eight duplicate um, records. And there are other options. You can create labels um, and other things within the data set as well. So that's, that's just uh, um, one option. All right, so let's look at filter sparse data. Let me hook it up to the, the messy data, double click on it. Um, the, the, the parameters here, I get to select what variables I want. I'm gonna select all here. Um, all cases and then here's where I set my threshold I'm going to say that if there's 10% uh, missing data in a column or a variable um, then call it sparse or if for a particular row if it's missing 10% of the data across the columns then call it sparse and I'm going to click OK OK and then I'm going to run that and then now I have a downstream document that I can bring in as part of the, the workflow. Um, there was no change here, so I still have the same number of uh, columns and, and variables. Um, but if I did, I would have would have actually taken those out in the downstream document, and then I can move on with my analysis. Another example, let's look at process invariant data. And again, so this is, we, we looked at this in the data health check node. This is where I have very little variation in a column. Uh, no point in using that for, for predictive modeling. 
um, uh, by default, select all variables, all cases, and with a relative standard deviation uh, specified here, and you can set you can set that whatever you want. Um, so here, I'm going to run that. I'm going to look and see if I have any invariants, and um, I really didn't catch anything within this particular data set as far as an invariant column. So I'm passing all 24 variables along. But you get the idea. If I had did have one, then I could use again. This is a downstream document, and go from there. No, I'm going to select. I'm going to actually click on messy data so that when I drop my next node down, which is uh, recode outliers, um, it will go ahead and hook up directly to my data. What does the recode outliers look like? Well, I can have two different types of outliers. I can have um, both categorical data, which is customer ID is, or I can have numeric data. So let's add at least one continuous variable here as well. Um, I believe credit uh, score should be um, continuous. Um, actually, I meant to add that. So let me add credit score and uh, credit rating. Okay, so I've got one uh, continuous variable here, credit score, and the, the parameters that I have right here is a uh, standard deviation, so two-sided normal, but I can change that, right? I can change it to a one side, I can change it to a two key. If you didn't look at the data health check node, um, you might want to look at that um, because some of the same settings are available. You know, we can do grubs tests, we can do two keys, we can do percentiles, as well as standard deviation. So all of that different way that you can do. So what it's going to do is if it found a an outlier, it's going to crook, recode to missing, or I can specify a different mode. I can, in fact, I can say percentile, give me the 50th percentile. In other words, give me the median um, value. For credit rating, any category that's less than 5% present, let's suppose I have red, green, blue, and blue only is present 3% of the time, then it's going to take the, those rows out, um, and then I can I can specify whatever. So, but I could even specify to a user-defined value here, but I'll specify to um, missing data. All right. So I'll click OK. OK. Let's just run that. And what does that look like? I get a downstream document here um, as well. So um, let's see, we've got a couple more things that we can talk about. Um, that was outliers. What about missing data? If I'm missing data, and if I had pre-selected that messy data node, it would have hooked it up automatically. I guess I like to do things manually today. Um, then this this missing data, and I can specify whatever variables. I can specify even all of the variables here. And uh, let's just say, um, you know, that I want to uh, recode to um, to values. I could recode to median. I can recode to whatever that I want to there. However, rather than doing things um, with for all, let's do something a little more surgical, uh, a little more precise. I'm going to go back into my messy data document. I'm going to see here in the header that actually duration of credit has some missing data in it. So I'm just going to focus on um, uh, duration of credit here. Um, I'm going to grab only that variable. And then I'm going to recode to, um, we'll say missing. Okay, so let's run that. And then when I get that value in, then duration of credit for anything that's missing, I just threw that value that I coded in there. So I can set that. Actually, this is numeric, and by the way, I can set my numerics to, um, you know, um, 
uh, median, again, we saw it just a minute ago, mean mode, median, of any sort of percentile, et cetera. But the other thing that we can do is we can impute the data. What does that mean? It means actually using a predictive model to um, help figure out what that missing value should be. So let's do that next. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to say M missing data impu imputation. And let's do the same thing on that same column. So let's suppose that I have duration of credit. I'm going to actually use a algorithm to figure out what that data should be, how it should look like the, the other data available. So um, I um, am going to use a, a K uh, nearest neighbor algorithm to, um, to figure out what that, that value is. So in the variables, the value that I want to um, pick was what? Duration of credit. And then, so that's my target variable. And then let me pick a few predictors. Um, uh, let's see, these are categorical inputs, maybe credit rating, um, let's say age and gender, let's say that for continuous balance of current account um, and credit score. All right, so click OK. I'm going to use K equal three. In other words, look at the, the three values that are closest um, to this. And whatever the duration of credit is, put that value into the cell. And, that, and that's essentially what it, what it does here. Okay, and then I'm going to run that. And I'm going to get output. And uh, now I've filled in um, my duration of credit values. Here's the field data, just to show you, if I looked at the messy data, when I looked at the duration of credit, you see that I've got quite a few holes in this data right here, whereas the, um, the uh, imputed value, um, I'm not missing any data there. So hopefully this was meaningful. Um, it's really easy to remediate, you know, Fix your data, cleanse your data. Again, I, I encourage you to check out the Data Health Check video that we did last time. Um, but you can do these uh, individually um, on fixing your data, create a workflow so that you have clean data to analyze. All right. Again, join me next time. We'll be talking about uh, transform and standardize. I look forward to seeing you then.